Hey everyone, and welcome back to eTalk. This week, we'll be covering the latest celebrity gossip updates, bringing back Movie Corner, and reviewing some VMA fashion. All that and more coming up on this episode of eTalk. Hey eTalkers, and welcome to this week's celebrity gossip recap. There's so much to cover, so let's just get into it. Okay, we got to start with Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, and what a way to start. Because we talked about her last week. Yes, we did. Album was about to come out. We had no clue about the tour. And I now know. both. I know. And I was, I love the album. I think it's really different than Sour. Like if you had to compare yeah. which one you like better. Oh, you know, I don't know. I've been listening to Guts a lot more. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm kind of leaning towards that. But Sour's just like. It's so good. But like I think you can really tell she's grown a lot. So I'm like, I kind of think Guts is more like artistically like better. Yeah. Because I, I really feel like, like especially it. listening to it, like I haven't listened to it all the way through. Like I've listened to some of them. I know it's bad. But I think at least the ones I've heard, you could tell like it's kind of fun. She's growing up with us because yeah. she's the same age. So you can relate yes. to things. Yeah. Like she gets it. Like the song Get Him Back. I'm like. That one's my favorite. Love it. Like that literally one's good. like she like gets it. Which is so nice to hear, and it's, like, great. And then the tour, yeah. which I was freaking out about. I did not get a pre-sale code. I or don't know code. anybody who got a pre-sale code. Only, I know my friend's friend got it, and but, like, I don't know anyone. I'm hoping and, it's yeah. kind of the thing where it's, like, because they messed up so much with Taylor yeah. that they went under, and then they'll add more. I think they will do that because, also, again, they messed it up again. They made the ticket prices so expensive. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people are like, I'm not paying $800 to sit like Nose in the blades. nosebleeds, like I'm not doing that. Yeah. So hope, fingers crossed, so hope I can get tickets. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, no. no, speaking of tour, obviously we talked about Taylor is gonna yes. go back in two months. Yes. She's starting up again, but we have an advancement in the Travis Kelsey situation. We do. And it's really exciting. He said today, I don't know if it was on a radio or a podcast, they were, were asking, because they've been making hints, like while he's playing, they said blank space, like they're wondering about numbers, there was 87, yes. 89, you know. 1989, they were both born in. And he said today, he's like, I asked her to come to one of the football games. So we'll see what happens. I honestly, I think that would be like a fun pair. I would love it. I'm rooting for this so much. Yeah. Like, just they, a little bit, like a little flicker of it. Even yeah. if it doesn't last, I think though that she needs it, mm -hmm. you know, especially after Joe and Matt Healy. <laughs> yeah. Well, because she's she got 1989 coming out and it would be perfect because they're both born in 1989. Right. It would be good promo. It the would. vault tracks. Oh my God. Got released. No collabs, which I know. I feel like, I'm, I feel like there's still something else coming. I, I agree, because like it's 1989. Like this mm -hmm. was like her big, like this was huge when it came out. Yeah. So like I think she's got to do something more. Oh, I would love if Harry Styles was a feature. I don't think she'll do that. I, it doesn't even say Kendrick's it. on the album for oh, Bad right, Blood right. Remix. So is she going to re release that? Am I still going to have to stream the old version? Because it's really good. To. I know. We'll see. But hopefully. I'm really excited though. They look good. So mm -hmm. I'm excited to see. Well, some people are saying Ice Spice might replace Kendrick's verse, which I, I could know. I could kind of see her doing that. I don't know if I love that because, like, I would want something new with her again. Yeah, Like, I for agree. something else. But, I mean, she has her Duncan collab. Have you mm -hmm. tried it? I have not. I haven't either because I, I feel not. like a fake fan, a fake munchkin. <laughs> but it's actually the pumpkin spice munchkins in oh. the drink. So oh. it's, like, super sugary. Oh, my God, And yeah. I don't know if it's a latte or something, but they were showing how it's made, and it's, like, the milk, the sugar, like crushed up munchkins, and then like whipped cream. <laughs> Wait, but that sounds like really good. It does sound good. I might have to. I know. I'm not a big it. coffee drinker, but I feel like I would try that. Yeah, because she did a commercial with Ben Affleck, and it was just funny. Like everybody's loving Ice Spice, everybody yeah. loves Duncan. She's like just a slayer. Like, I, know. I love she her. She can do no wrong Literally. in my eyes. No, it's I agree. so good. Um, who can that. do wrong? Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Yep. Yeah, they really. That was like, they Shocking. were trying to do it under the wraps too. So yeah. it's like, you know, they knew what it was wrong. It was, yeah. Because for context, I don't even know his name. He doesn't even deserve to be name dropped I don't on even, here. Yeah. The 70s show guy is going to jail for 30 years. His yeah. wife filed for divorce, yep. everything. And Ashton and Mila sent in letters to court defending him. And they went yes. public because everything in yeah. court is public pretty much. Yeah. And it's also like they're celebrities too. Like yeah. it's going to. So, of course, they release. got backlash. It was probably 24 hours, and they re released an apology video. They looked all, like, yeah. musty, as they usually do. Yeah. And yeah. it was just, like, nobody really cared, because they were like, yeah. why are well, you, you doing Well, you did this? it anyway. Like, you, sent, you said what you said. Yeah. 
It's especially yeah. like it didn't feel sincere and nobody really cared. Yeah, I know. That's just like bizarre. I can't believe that even happened. Yeah. Also, another negative thing that happened with Drew Barrymore. Right. I that know. was crazy. And she's the one I feel like got attacked the most because yeah. there was five shows that were announced. They were coming back during the strikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were saying they were going around the rules. I don't know if they were wrong yeah. about that or people just didn't want that or people yeah. were bored on Twitter. Who knows what happens? Yeah. But she got attacked the most because I know Jennifer yeah. Hudson's show was also supposed to come back. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> They're all being pushed off again. Yeah, she, I saw an article today about Drew Barrymore mm -hmm. and she said that they're just pausing it yeah. for the strike. A couple she months, said like, that, like, I think everyone wanted me to do this and, like, it's yeah. a weird thing. Because like, honestly, she has no malicious intent. Yeah, I don't think she does. I, she, think I don't think just. anybody did. I just think they were like, okay, your show's coming back. She was all excited. And then yeah. she's like, okay, I'll wait. Yeah, but I, agree. I don't no, think there it was like rumors it was gonna get canceled, at all. but it's definitely yeah. just like indefinitely. Yeah, definitely just paused for now. And yeah, she just started it too, I feel like, pretty recently. So, like, mm -hmm. it would be upsetting if it was canceled already. Yeah, no, everybody, it's just nice to have on. Like, yeah. it's so cute. But podcasts can still go on. Yes, so they can. Call Her Daddy's making a comeback with Unwell Network. Yes. Alex Earl's Unwell podcast came out today. Madeline Argies, I think, is coming out sometime this week, yeah. part of the Unwell Network. I listened to Alex Earls today. I'm obsessed with it. I love watching her TikToks. I've watched every single yeah. one. It's just, like, relatable. Oh, OK. And like, what did she talk about this episode? So first it, yeah. first is all the tea we wanted with her and Braxton. She okay. didn't say his name. But like, but we, like we all knew. We, we know. Um, we got that story. She also okay. told part of the story on the Call Her Daddy podcast, which right. I haven't listened I to that yet. I started listening to that. I need to listen to that and next. Like, it's like, they really get into it though too. Cause like even the first five minutes, it's like meet her family. So it's like goes into like each sibling and yeah. like they talk to them, which is like, her family's so cool. cute too. Like I love all those and videos she, like, her Yeah, she really makes them known in like a part of the video. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's good that they get a little moment. And, like, I probably should have watched that one first because yeah, I think that's before hers. But I just put it on because YouTube, you can, like, watch it, too. Yeah. So I had that on while getting ready. And it was just good because then you get to meet her friends because, like, everybody knows yes. Kristen. Yes, But there's, like, the other ones who you don't really know. Yeah, I Natalie know wasn't there. Yeah. But they talked about freshman year of college, and it was kind of, like, I was comparing because I was, like, I feel like theirs yeah. was very different than our freshman year. Yeah. And she was I saying one of her friends was actually the mascot, and she couldn't talk about it. Like, she was only it for, like, a month. Oh, my God, But there wow. were just funny stories. And then yeah. Alex Cooper came on, and they went to her old house and stuff. Oh, okay. And then she did an cool. un-get ready with me, which I think that was my favorite part. Okay. She said for people to send, like, get ready with me TikToks, but they want the stories after she got ready. Yeah. So she did for Drake's birthday party. Oh. And then I want to hear about the white party. Oh, so do I. Because there were so, so many people I. there. Yes. That was crazy. So I'm excited. I'll be tuning in every week. Yeah, the 50 no, I minutes definitely will be. went by quick. Like, I yeah, don't like, like watching long stuff, but that was good. Yeah, not me. Um, speaking of watching things, American Horror Story is back. It is back. With Kim Kardashian, mm -hmm. with Emma Roberts, best duo. Yes, iconic. But, you know, Emma. I know. There's a little bit of controversy. Right before it came out, too. Which, honestly, was that a good PR move? Like, because I know the actress, she went on live. Yeah. He was saying Emma was rude, made a couple comments. This isn't the first time we've heard that about yeah, her. Yeah, like I wouldn't really, I wasn't surprised. Like, yeah. It's been a she long apologized thing. right away. The show came out. I can't wait to see the reviews. Yeah. Because people are already kind of flaming Kim for the trailer. But yeah. I have hope. I think she, she showed up for SNL. She's going to show up for this. Yeah, I agree. I don't I mean, know what the plot is. She looks good in the trailer, her, though. But. We'll see. Um, there are rumors Kim's dating o uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Oh, really? Yeah, which that was kind of out of nowhere, but I kind of shipped that too. The yeah. Kim and Taylor athlete arc. Yeah, wait, yeah. Are I'm waiting like for that, that reunion. Yeah, I agree. Because everybody's because like, both I hate Kim Kardashian because of Taylor. And I'm like, that that's a Kanye thing. I think I they're going to make I agree. I think it's just like Kim had to be on Kanye's side. Mm -hmm. Like, again, like the weird, like, I have receipts or whatever. Kind of weird, but again, it's like, you're supporting you know, your husband. If her and Katy so. Perry can make up, so can her and Kim. I agree. And, like, also, oh, what, what? There was a song she wrote about, oh, on Midnight, she wrote a song. It's like, I know I'm good was with it, your wife. Yes. They could feed And they were talking that with Scooter Braun, but the first time I listened to that, I'm like, this could be Kim. No, it's definitely Kim. I think it's, it's totally Kim. Kim, and I'm waiting for that, because there was that rumor going around that it was, like, North was at the show, but that yeah. wasn't that show. But I think that'd be great if they went to one. Oh, yeah, that'd be insane. Because, like, also, there was uh, Carly Kloss was at an Aerosaur show. And yes, now it's in big. the nosebleeds. Yes, not that even in, like, crazy. VIP tent. So I was like. I was eating that up because they were like, 
I don't know what's funnier, Carly Kloss sitting in the queue with everybody else or Carly Kloss buying ex way too expensive resale well, tickets. Like, literally. Like, did she get a presale code? Have to she, register? she did not ask anybody to go. Literally. Like, and it's like, wow. It was like crazy. When I saw that, I was like, jaw dropped. I need the full Insane. story on that because it's time to go. Has some yes. hints at that. But Scooter Braun's dropping his company. Like, he's not working as a talent manager anymore. Oh. Because they keep saying, like, Justin Bieber's leaving, Ariana Grande's leaving. Mm. They're not leaving. He's just stopping. Okay, and got so it. And so they're finding other management. Demi Lovato, other right. management. Oh, wow. That's, that's so, I lot. mean, Taylor's karma always comes around. It does, but it goes around comes around. We'll see. But thank you for tuning in to this celeb recap. Next up, we have Movie Corner. But first, let's take a look about what students had to say with Barbie and Oppenheimer. When did it end? Just trying to persuade you. Oh, go and join me. It. I'm sad again. Don't impress him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Don't all right, I'm Luke Villanova, and I'm here with Eat Sock, and I'm with... Eric Kahneman. All right, we're here to know if Barbie or Oppenheimer is the better film this year. Uh, I'm going to go with Barbie, personally. Joel, what's your name? Lila. I haven't seen Oppenheimer, but even so, the answer is definitely Barbie. Lena. Barbie, easy. Barbie. Barbie. Oppenheimer. Now I am become the, the destroyer of worlds. Okay, our first Oppenheimer of the day. Can we get a little why? Um, I really love historical fiction, and I don't like Ryan Gosling. Interview? What? Interview? I'm honestly gonna have to say Oppenheimer. Why? It was really, really good. Alyssa, I don't even know what Oppenheimer is, so Barbie. Barbie Oppenheimer, scream it. Oh, Barbie Oppenheimer, Barbie, Barbie. Barbie, scream it! Oppenheimer sucks, oh, I can't say that. <laughs> Barbie, I never saw Oppenheimer. I really like Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. Barbie. 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 Obviously. Barbie. All right, scream it. Barbie. 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 Mike. Shira Fisler. Full name. All right. <laughs> Oppenheimer. Louder. Barbie. Louder. Barbie. Louder. Oppenheimer. Louder. Barbie. Louder. <laughs> Louder. Oppenheimer. Louder. Barbie. Louder. Oppenheimer. Louder. Oppenheimer. Louder. Barbie. Louder. Barbie. I love both. I liked Oppenheimer better. It reminded me of um, Stanley Kubrick's Paths of Glory. I loved every second of it. I thought it was amazing. Well, I've only seen Barbie, so I got to go with that one. Ariel. And we're going to ask the question, Barbie or Oppenheimer? Barbie. I'm Jessica. Barbie. You say why? I haven't seen Oppenheimer. <laughs> All right, what's your name? Olivia? Oh, considering I didn't see either, honestly, I don't know, but probably Oppenheimer because Barbie makes me mad. Um, Barbie, definitely. Did you cry? Yes, a lot. I saw Barbie. Do you like it? I enjoyed it. I would not see it again. Katie? Barbie? I think it's like the best acted film I've ever seen, and I think it's a cinematic masterpiece. Okay, good. All right, ready? Barbie or Oppenheimer? Oppenheimer. Name? Owen. Name a woman. Uh, Mariah Carey. Perfect. All right, Lainey. Okay. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Bobby. Uh, Oppenheimer, it was gas. Good. Claudia. Becca. Uh, I haven't seen Oppenheimer, so Barbie. Definitely Barbie. Barbie, Barbie. Louder. She's the best. Barbie, Barbie, better than the rest. Senator, Madam Senator, <laughs> right here. <laughs> Barbie. Can we get a little question why? Um, it's just very feminist. I felt very seen as a woman and watching it with both my mom and my sister, I just felt very happy. Barbie. Hey talkers, welcome back to the Movie Corner. Let's talk about some movie news. Starting with Barbie being released on released in IMAX theaters on September 22nd. So, has everybody seen Barbie here? 
Mm-hmm. No. no. You've not seen Barbie. I have. Do you want to see Barbie? I do. So will you be seeing an IMAX or regular vision? Probably IMAX. Yeah. I mean, Margot Robbie and IMAX can't really complain. This is true. True. It's, so people that have seen Barbie, um, what are you guys' overall thoughts? Is there any negative reviews? I really enjoyed the movie. I went with my two of my best friends and we were all bawling our eyes out by the end of the film. It was like, it was such a girlhood film. Like we left the theater like speechless. We couldn't figure out like, what did we just watch? Like, why are we feeling so many things? And it was like, I think we all agreed that we actually felt like represented in like a good way. And like, I know that's cheesy, that's what everyone's saying, but it was like, literally like it was, it felt so weird walking out of the theater. Like it was just like, I'd never, I'd never seen that, felt that in a film before. Like, so, I mean, I've cried in movies, but like, I was like sobbing my eyes out. It was such a strange experience. Do you think we get a little sound break from you? Uh, I, when I watched it, I watched it with my girlfriend, and she felt the same as Lindsay did, and she thought she was very well, well, well represented. But uh, when I watched it, I didn't really feel that, because I'm, of course I'm not a woman. I don't understand that. I've never played with Barbies. I hated Barbies as a kid. I'm a boy. Oh. And, uh, but I remember I'm a, I'm a boy, and like, Boys aren't allowed to play with Barbies or some shit or like some stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, and um, what I remembered, what I think, thought about, thought I felt during that movie was I felt a little bit nostalgic. And I feel like that movie was um, uh, talking about the rela- reality and then how like some people don't really want to move on to reality and they get really sad, like the mom in the movie. She gets really, really sad and gets really pr- depressed and then gets the press Barbie out there. It's kind of like moving on from that, and then it's like you feel nostalgic about your childhood. I mean, as kids grow up, they f- they see stuff, they see the bad stuff that's going on in the, in the world right now, and they're like they just feel nostalgic. They just want to go back to the old times, and I think that's something the movie also focuses on a lot, and it almost made me cry because I felt nostalgic too. And with that part where the Billy Eilish song, song came up, I was and I saw those flashbacks, reminded me of my childhood. But, you know, instead of like, you know, the, it was reminding me of my mom and like how she was in my childhood and all that stuff, that always made me cry. But like, I'm, I, was, I walked out of the theater, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe let's break down the film, starting from the beginning. Has everybody seen 2001 A Space Odyssey? Yes. You've seen 2001, have you seen 2001? Not really. So, th- as you know, the beginning of the film is an homo- homage to 2001 with the um, monolith, mm. with having Barbie. Can you maybe cue us into a little bit about maybe what that meant to you with that um, visual language of the Kubrick film? I actually have to be really honest. I was laughing so hard yeah. when that happened. It was like to see the little girls like playing with the dolls. It was like I get like I really honestly could not believe what I was seeing. I was like, there's no because I like kept myself completely spoiler free going into the movie. I hadn't seen anything. Like if it came up on my TikTok, I would scroll right past it. I wanted to go in completely blind. I was flabbergasted, like seeing that, it was like, it was like, it like, I guess really like picked up on the fact of how iconic Barbie was and how it like forever changed like girls' toys and toys in general. In Kubrick's film, the monolith is is shown as like a, um, it's an otherworldly creature. It's possibly aliens, possibly more. It's also a gateway into another world. It's shown up through uh, most of the film. Having the classic Barbie suit, the very first Barbie costume, very first Barbie look, be this mythical being, this alien figure, I think it really shows maybe how it's so ingrained into pop, pop, pop culture. And maybe we can talk a little bit about the casting too, mm-hmm. a little bit. So Barbie is played by Margot Robbie. And I think everybody really gave a big pop where the narrator came on and was saying, can't have a body positivity Barbie when you have Margot Robbie. Yeah. So I think that was a really interesting thing. I think it really endeared the audience. I think Greta Gerwig was m- very much aware of her place in the film, as mm-hmm. uh, especially using, if you go with the auteur theory. Yeah, no, that was, like for, it, I, I will admit this, like when it was talking about, you know, bo- body positivity, like not everyone has to be this like perfect Barbie. And then like the main cast of Barbies are these like iconic, beautiful celebrities. Yeah. However, the film like did take it upon itself to cast a wide variety of Barbies, which the company 
and we're seeing it a lot of dolls today like are branching out into that and it was nice to see that um in the film specifically but i did like it was funny and it was like it added to the power of the film for it to be so self-aware yeah. of like oh yeah we have margot robbie playing barbie like we know what we're doing so like i feel like that kind of combats the message of people being like oh well you had margot robbie cast like she's like this beautiful and you're trying to preach about like body positivity and you have this perfect actress the movie was self-aware yeah. and it did it in like a very wise like funny way well, i think it's so great i mean we it, the just ken song really made this film probably a lot larger than it was ever going to be because mm -hmm. it was just so, so catchy it was being played on the radio it's all over TikTok, and i think it's just a, a natural good that this film was accepted by such a wide audience. It made a billion dollars. That is no, that's like Marvel movie level, which it does feel like it's a budget that's very high. Um, well, it's quite lower than a lot of the Marvel films, but significantly higher cast. Margot has been in a bunch of stuff. Gosling has been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, Will Ferrell is, is a small role in the film, but like just even the parties all, that we've seen on campus so far, accepting a lot of the Barbie versus Oppenheimer um, stuff like that. The package that we, you guys just saw, uh, Barbie versus Oppenheimer. Uh, 33 people have, were able to contribute with that and almost nobody said, I have not seen any of the films. And that's like, it was a cultural moment. And it, to have a film be such a positive message and so overtly positive, maybe not as hard as some people wish it would have went, which I agree with that statement, um, having it be that widespread and Ticket's a billion dollars. Sorry, if one ticket is worth 11 bucks and it's a billion dollars, a ton of people were able to see this message. Mm -hmm. I remember when I went with my friends, there was a handful of guys in the audience. Like a lot of them were there with their girlfriends, but there was a couple of just like guys our age that were in there. And they were like laughing as a part of the movie. And it was kind of funny when we were all like walking out, all the girls were like, looking at the looking at each other in this like odd moment of like solidarity of like oh my gosh like that's us and then the guys are kind of like like i remember walking out and they were like talking about like oh i didn't get it or like that was okay like it was funny but like i think there's a big message about masculinity in that too like and it's it's done in like a satirical way because it is about barbie like at the end of the day it's a woman film it's about barbie but there was still that like side plot of like ken finding who he is and like depicting, like you said, positive masculinity, which I think is an important takeaway. I also think it's really interesting, um, just kind of thinking about this as we're talking, is um, the real life relationship between Greta Gerwig and her husband, Noah Baumbach, who is another film director who directed the film Marriage Story, which won an Oscar, that's Star Joe and uh, Driver. Um, I think it can be really interesting where Ken was finding his own masculinity, his own positive masculinity, and Barbie was finding her own self. So you could almost say that that they are representations of themselves with Bombach and Gerwig. So maybe we could talk about a little of the cameos. So we had um, John Cena <laughs> as a mermaid. And merman. Merman, merman. <laughs> and we had, um, Sasha, isn't it Sasha Banks? I think so, and Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa, isn't it? Was it Dua Lipa with John Cena? No, it's like, no, that Dua Lipa was, that was the. Dua Lipa. Uh, no, that it's not, it wasn't. That. Dua Lipa was one of the uh, the mermaids. Really? She was the original mermaid, and then John Cena replaced Dua Lipa mm -hmm. in the Ken world. Oh, you know? yeah. okay, gotcha. That's yeah, what yeah. That, that's where John Cena came in. It was really funny. Uh, and there was like Michael Sarah. Yeah, Michael Sarah. What was his name? Alan. Alan. What was his name? Alan. I, it, was, it was just kind of there. Who's kind of there? Uh, I didn't really know what to say about him. He's just kind of there. He's just yeah. Alan. And I love that he's getting more work because he's had he's had a pretty dry period since Scott Pilgrim, Stop. Nora, Nora, Nick and Nora. Like he really haven't hasn't been in a lot of big stuff. I mean, super bad, massive, but he has Barbie this year. He's in a, he just was in a new he's in a new Nick Cage film. It's A twenty four that I believe is coming out this year. The tra trailer just dropped. It's it's a little weird. It's I, I think it's trying to capitalize of everything everywhere all at once. Mm -hmm. A lot of style, stylistically very much um, the same. It's almost like if everything everywhere all at once and um, Nightmare on Elm Street had a baby. So hopefully that will be good. Um, but Sarah's also got some indie film, which I'm not too crazy on. It, like he's reconnecting with his sisters and it, it doesn't look good. So hopefully Sarah can bring it and it's heartwarming, but 
I don't know. How long does Sarah have, really? I do have to say, Alan was iconic. Yeah. Like, the girlies went crazy for Alan. It was, like, a very interesting, um, like, concept to have him in there. But I think it, it, it adds an extra layer to the movie, which, for a movie that has so many, like, layers, it was... It, everything was intentional, and I think everybody, like, got something out of it, watching it. Like, I walked out of the movie kind of, like, kind of understanding my girlfriend's childhood mm -hmm. a little bit more, not to the full extent, of course, because I could never understand it fully because I didn't live that life. Um, and sh uh, we, we had a really interesting, we had a really deep talk about, like, how masculinity and femininity is portrayed and how, like, childhoods of boys and girls are so different on the on the way home and it's just like I don't quite remember what the conversation was about but like I remember thinking about some really deep thoughts I was not expecting to think about deep thoughts watching a Barbie movie to wrap this up we all had a really positive experience with Barbie something that I think a lot of people will this will be something we look back at too in our college years and a really positive message and hopefully more films like this get made that's all the movie news we have for today. Stay tuned to hear Emma's thoughts on some VMA carpet looks. The VMAs were so exciting this year, so let's take a look at some of the red carpet looks that really stood out. Okay, so we're starting with Olivia Rodrigo. Yes, I love this. I think it, it almost won the night. There's somebody I, who won over her for me, but I love that dress. I love it. It looks fit, great. Her hair. It was like simple. But like she crushed it. Yeah. It was like perfect. I think it's also great for the VMAs too because it's not like the fanciest, fancy. but it's super fun too. Mm -hmm. And like I think it was great and I loved it. And her performance was good. Oh yeah. Um, Megan The Stallion. I, I like it. I like it. It fits her look. Yeah. I like the choker. She looks good. Maybe wouldn't have done like the underpants underneath Yeah, it. that's sometimes a little bit my issue too. Sometimes it's too see-through because again, it's an award show. Yeah. So I kind of think a little bit classier route, but I, I do like it. I think it's her and I think she nailed it. I like it a lot better than Sweetie's. Oh, yeah. Like the dress has so much potential. I love the I pink, agree, I love the yes. sparkles, I love the fit. It's the bone. The bones, like not really my thing. The two, I don't know what that is. A collarbone? Like, what is she trying I to like, go for that? Sometimes it's just, like, unnecessary. Yeah, and she also, she yeah. was hosting the pre-show. Okay. And it was really rough. I feel like that just, like, kind of gets in your way. And I feel like she hasn't been relevant in a couple years. Yeah. This was kind of the comeback she could have had. Didn't work. And she's yeah. wearing bones. I also think this is something you would kind of see at, like, a Met Gala. Yeah, like, like for Like, it's too a out theme. there. Yeah, it's like kind of too out there for the VMAs. Yeah, for sure. Um, but Nikki went for the pink, mm. ate it up. Yes. Do I know why there was a veil? No. But it Don't. worked. Yeah. She was serving. She hosted. Yes. She did great. Yes. She brought out the memes, the entertainment, you know. She looked great. I, yeah. She looks great. She won second best of the night from the article that rated these. Yes. Uh, Carol G., when you look really close, people say she's the Spanish Khloe Kardashian. Yeah. And I can I see I was it. actually just going to say. They look really like. I like it. I like the um, little the cape kind of thing. Yeah, I like that. I feel like the see through has been overdone. Like that yeah. does look like something Kim would wear. Mm -hmm. And again, the underpants see through. But I like the dress itself, like the fit, the yeah. cape. It was something different. It goes with her hair because her hair is bright. Yes, I think, I think it works. I like it. It's like, really well balanced. Good. Anita is not my favorite. You know, I'm not a fan of that. I don't. Just the earrings being mishmashed big. The headband is a cute yeah. look for the hair. Yeah, I like the headband, and I think it goes well with the dress. I'm assuming that's like what she was going for. I just yeah. don't like the dress itself, really. Yeah, no, that's not my favorite. Not, no, Demi eight. I like that. I think the new rock album. Yeah, it fits the look. Performance was a little rough. Yeah, because it's all the songs we grew up on. We like to rehear it. I know Demi's trying to like re-rock it out. It's just the promotion is not there. Because you have Taylor re-releasing, right? And so it's, it's like, promote it well, but then yeah. you have Demi re-releasing, and it's just not. There's like a lot. It's like not as like I don't think people are as into it as yeah. they were for Taylor. Exactly, but the look was good. Yeah, Cardi B's was stunning. I like it. Usually I like that. Usually she's hit or miss for me, and this I agree. was a hit. Didn't even bother to include Offset. 
but <laughs> she looked so good. The performance with Megan was okay. Like, I don't yeah. love the song, You Can't Beat Out WAP. Like, you can't do WAP. Yeah, I agree. WAP was just amazing. But she looked like... good. BB looked good, too. Yeah. I didn't include the back because maybe her cheeks were out. Perhaps. Um, giving a little James Charles. But <laughs> I think she looked good, especially after yeah. the phone incident. She looks yeah. great. I, like, you can't even tell. You can't tell that a phone almost blew her eye out. Like, that. Yeah. Poor BB. She deserved great. to have a good night. Yeah. Um, I love this couple. I, yeah. I'm obsessed too. with Chase Stokes and Kelsey Ballerini. They're so cute. And I like how they coordinated. They and matched. It was like, they both look nice. Like, oh my God, he's like, looks really good there. I know. He usually <laughs> like, doesn't look you, good, usually but he does. Usually on like red carpets, he doesn't look as good. But no, he like killed that. No, because Madeline like Klein's it. moved on. He's moved on. They're cute together. Yeah. I love it. And like, she looks so pretty. Her performance yeah. was good. Shakira's too. Shakira right. did a performance. Ooh, I like this. So she got one of the Icon Awards. She did mm -hmm. a 10 minute performance, ones that Britney's done, Rihanna's done, like iconic. Why didn't she perform more hits? Yeah. She performed, the ones I know were She Wolf, Waka Waka. No, she didn't do Waka Waka. Oh, she did. It didn't. was She Wolf, Whenever, Wherever, and Hips Don't Lie. I know okay. she has giant Spanish hits. Yeah. So she sang some of those. But with the 10 minutes, she sang a lot of new ones. And I was like, where yeah, I, are all the other ones? Yeah, I think for award shows, you kind of got to do what people know. But her kids were with her. They're super cute. And her dress was really pretty. Yeah, but I like it. That itself. Um, OK, rapid fire. Pink Panthers. Not not my vibe. Not my vibe. Sophia Carson. No. Not my vibe. That fit VMA. Okay. Yes. OK, I'm going to fit with VMA. It. Yeah. Dove, I like. I like this. It looks a little promy though. Selena was stunning. Yep. Yeah. Like that. I love it. Honestly, that might have. That's like even with Olivia's look for me. Yeah. It reminds me of her come and get it, like the red dress. <gasps> yes. Yes. She I looks like great. This. Her and Taylor are both there. Yeah. Shout out Elon alum, Audrey Challenger. Yes. She looks great. She I was like at the it. VMAs. Love. I think she's good. She looks great. And to end it all, the one and only Taylor Swift. Of course, love it. I literally love it. She can do it. no wrong. She. The hair. I mean, I like her hair up. Like, if yeah. it was down, it would have been cool. It looks better with up because I feel like there's a lot going on up here. Mm -hmm. So I think it looks better with her hair up so you can really see it, everything. She's making us clown again. It's giving rep. The snake ring. So many theories. and Like, people are thinking rep might drop the same time as 1989. I don't want it to. I don't think it will. I don't think she'll do that because they're both so separate. Yeah. They need their own time to shine. But I feel like she'll probably announce it's coming Maybe soon. Maybe at the same time. Yeah. But... I think I think it had some good looks. I I agree. Mm -hmm. I think this was great. Thanks for tuning in this week, eTalkers, and see you next time. To find out more about eTalk, visit elonstudenttv.org.